Hi, I'm Michelle, and I am so grateful to be here with you today. I'm a health coach, and if you want to know more about me, I have it at the end of this um, presentation in the slide deck. So today I'm excited because I am here to really talk to you about how you can harness your inner strength and power by understanding the connection between the mind, the body, and the spirit. And I think that what we're going through right now in these trying times that people are having a lot of different emotions. And so my goal for you today is to really give you the tools that you need to get yourself back into more inner peace and calmness and to really understand how you can use um, your power, especially the power of the mind, to really make a significant difference in your life and in the lives of other people just by knowing this information. So I, as I said, I'm really glad to be here today. So we're going to start first um, about what you can expect. First, you're going to learn why we think the way we do, because every single person thinks differently. And I'm sure that if you're on any kind of social media, you will see some people out there that are posting things in one way, and then you may see other people posting things that are very positive. And there's a reason that we are all different, and, it's, and there's no right or wrong in that. And so I think it's important to understand that piece of us, because we are all unique. Um, we also, I'm going to help you to learn how to deal really with strong emotions that can affect your well-being. And I'm actually going to tell you a little bit about my story so that you can see how I relate and why this is so important to me. And then also, I don't want you to leave without knowing, well, now that I know this, how do I implement it for myself? What are the things that I can do that will really help? you know, me go back with this feeling of, you know, unlocking my, the key to my inner strength. And that's really what this is all about because we all have an inner strength, but what we allow is all the things that happen outside of us sometimes to really take over our emotions and our life and our well-being. So I'm going to start here. And before we talk about the images that are on there, I want to talk to you a little bit about what happens when you're a baby. So when you're a baby, babies only have two fears. One is of being dropped and the other is of loud noises. But think about it. When we're born, you know, we're these, you know, googly little happy things and we drool, you know, and we have our parents changing our diapers and there's never once that a baby's thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to look at my chubby little legs or, you know, I'm drooling and she's not going to like me. We Babies just, they're, there's nothing in their mind. There is no preconditioned thoughts or fears or anything like that. Um, the only reason that we acquire, which is the next thing, these beliefs and fears, it's because as we're growing up, we are being, you know, basically raised by our parents, by schools, our friends, societies, and our parents, you know, intentionally doing very well, they want us to be safe. And so when you think about your childhood, we get programmed with all these negative um, messages. Um, or it could be that maybe you found out that a friend broke their ankle or, you know, skiing or roller skating. And now your mom heard about that or you've heard about it and you're afraid now to go out and roller skate because you think you're going to get hurt. And we grow up with don't touch the stove. You're going to get burnt. Don't cross the street. You could be hit by a car. Um, and we are also conditioned to care what other people think. And what happens is we now start, and we're no longer that baby, now we're that person that we are afraid of what's around us externally. So what happens is we may actually not take an opportunity in our life. Maybe there's a job we want to apply for, but we're afraid that we're going to be rejected. And so we don't think we have a credential, so we don't even bother trying. Or we're afraid of getting hurt. We're afraid of pain. You know, somebody 
you know, hurting us and, or even disappointment that, you know, we don't want to do something because it might disappoint us. And so we literally give up our power. That's our inner strength that we, instead of being fearless, like a baby, we have actually become people that hold back on whatever we can experience in life in a positive way and to take chances and choices. And so some of that isn't necessarily can be damaging to our body, but it can be damaging to our spirit because if there is a job that we really want and we think that we have, you know, we can do it, but we just feel that we're not enough because somebody told us that. And I will give you an example. You know, when I was working in the corporate world, I didn't have a college degree, degree and people were telling me that I could never be CEO of a company without that degree. So people put limitations on me and I really started to believe that. But, you know, at one point in my career, I was so unhappy that I took a chance and I applied for a job at DuPont Hospital for Children um, in Delaware and they had already interviewed four nurses before me and I got the job. So I'm just giving you that testimony to say when you get out of that comfort zone and you go past those fears that we've learned or the limiting beliefs that people put on you, you gain your inner power back and you have more opportunities in life. So now that you know that, you know, with a baby, you were sort of fearless except for a couple things. And then, you know, the world around you sort of conditioned you with these thoughts and not all these thoughts are negative yeah we have you know fears and beliefs but i like to share this so people will understand as well one of the thoughts that we have is around um thoughts that we program in our minds and it's because it's what we were repeatedly told and so one of those things is music so if you've ever had a favorite song and if any of you are on here like me which you know i've been around for decades um, there are a lot of songs that I've heard, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that when those songs come on the radio, I know all the words. But if you ask me where I put my keys, I may not remember where I put them because I don't put them in the same place every day. And that is where our conscious and our subconscious brain comes in. So right now, you're in a state of consciousness. You're listening to me if you're on this video. And you may or may not remember very much of what I said. And typically you might leave with one or two key points that resonated with you and the rest you're gonna forget. That's normal. What we do remember are the things that we are repeatedly told. So it's what we hear, what we say every day to ourselves. So if every day we're waking up and saying, I'm stupid, oh my gosh, I'm always losing my keys. I can't stand the way I look. Whatever it is that we are saying all the time, hearing all the time, or even writing all the time, those are the things that it's not anymore, it's not just conscious. It's those are the things that you are literally programming into your mind, into this like file cabinet. So that is why we remember songs, because if there's a song that we're repeatedly listening to or singing, we're going to memorize those words. And when we are listening to our parents telling us something over and over again, maybe it's you have to go get grades or they're worried about what the neighbors are going to think if you're hanging out with a certain friend. And we almost become, we are, we become conditioned by the beliefs and the values of all of the people around us without ever going outside of those beliefs sometimes. And they become what we call our subconscious brain. So you'll see on the screen, there's a file cabinet and that's what happens when you go to sleep. All of the thoughts, all the memories from the day, that's where all of those, you know, you go on vacation and you remember that. Those are really important things. And so usually the things that get stored as in your subconscious brain are those that are constantly, again, told to us, you know, what we're hearing, what we're seeing on social media and like what we're reading and what we're saying about ourselves. But there are some things that only take once for our brains to store them. And those are things like trauma, significant grief, 
you know, people like veterans that are in the war and they may, you know, observe um, something very, um, you know, very, you know, gr griefful for them, you know, whether it was a, someone that they saw um, be injured, whatever that could be for them. And so those things also get stored in what you see, that file cabinet is where that subconscious brain is in your, in your body. And so we have, you know, to understand that when we store those things in our body, that those thoughts are what comes up in our day. So when we wake up, there is a statistics that I think it's anywhere from, people have anywhere from 12,000 to 80,000 thoughts every day. And a high percentage, like almost 80% of those thoughts are the same thoughts they saw, thought yesterday. And most of them are negative because that's how we've conditioned. And there really is only one way for us to get rid of those. And that really is to start speaking life over ourselves by using, you know, positive words. So we have to take some action on that um, to really change the way we think. But that takes time. And right now, you know, instead of getting into all of that, those ways, I'm just going to give you one. And then we're going to really talk about, well, you know, I'm not going to change, you know, all those thoughts in my brain overnight. But what I do want to do is to be able to manage them on a daily basis so that they're not hurting me in any way and that I can live a much happier, calm and peaceful life. And so one of the things that you can do to sort of, like we say, retrain your brain is to start speaking positive things so that when you catch yourself saying something, you know, negative or disempowering about yourself, you know, I don't have that skill. There's no way I'm ever going to be able to get that job or I don't know how to use technology or, you know, I don't like the way my body looks. Whatever it is that you're saying negative in the morning, say, I'm you know, I'm not where I need to be, but I'm on the road to getting healthy. You know, I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling more positive today about what's happening in the world. As long as I stay home, I'm not stuck at home. I'm safe at home. It's changing the language so that, you know, we are focusing more on, you know, the good things in our life. And so doing that through gratitude is an important piece. And we're going to talk about that. So now that you understand your conscious brain is when you're talking to people, it's today, it's you're in the present moment and you're living today. And then you go to sleep at night and your brain is deciding, you know, those things that you're repeatedly learning and saying and doing and, you know, hearing all those things are going to get tucked into this little file folder in your head. So why can that be good or bad? So let's, let me do this for you. So. What happens is our perception of the outside world is just that, it's our perception. So let's say you grew up in a family where you just went to Utah every year and you went skiing. And when you went skiing, you were a little kid and you've been skiing all your life, you have no fear of skiing. skiing. But your friend is petrified of skiing. He, you know, and I know me, I've never been on a skis before and I have this um, I hold back because I'm afraid that I'm going to break my leg or it's just not me. And maybe it's because somebody told me when I was young, an aunt of mine, that I was not coordinated, you know, that I, you know, the way I walked and everything that I wasn't coordinated and those things become our limiting beliefs in life. Well, why is that a problem? Well, you'll see up on the screen, it says, is this real or is it fear? So when we're thinking of the past, like say it's post-traumatic stress syndrome or somebody, something, something that somebody told us about ourselves, maybe it was a hurt, a grief, a rejection, and we dwell on that, it's no longer happening in our life. It's not real. It's the past. It's gone. And it's the same thing about the future. Like what we're going on right now, we're living in a time of uncertainty. And I have a lot of empathy and a lot of compassion for the people who are working and the people that are, you know, really wondering what tomorrow is going to bring. But what we really need to understand is that the, past, the future isn't real. Whenever we're worrying and thinking about the future, it's like having this imaginary picture in our head of what could go wrong instead of focusing on what could go right. 
for some reason, we like to stay focused in that, I want to say, disempowering thoughts of being helpless, when what we can do is focus on what we can. But the body doesn't know the difference. So think about this. Have you ever seen anybody who um, has gotten really angry and you see their face getting red or their ears turning red? You know, you can just see it in their face. Emotions, very strong emotions, create change in our body. Imagine that you're somebody who doesn't like to speak and you've been asked to get up and speak in front of a thousand people in an audience and you're standing in the back and the curtain is slightly pulled and you know you're getting ready to walk out and all you can do is feel your heart pounding, you know, really fast, it's racing. So that's where I want you to imagine how your mind and your thoughts affect your body, even in intimate relationships. If you're, you know, someone who's, you know, been attracted to the opposite sex and you, you know, you're thinking about them and those emotional rush and what that does to your hormones in your body. So I want you to understand that you, this is where you unlock that key to your inner power. Because knowing that allows you to realize that when you're in a state of anxiety, fear, stress, and focusing on what could happen that goes wrong, um, or you're working in a job that's so stressful that your heart is racing, you know, you're not stopping to eat and all that, your body is now going into a state of not knowing whether that anxious feeling that you have or that fearful or stressed feeling that you're having is a tiger that's chasing you. All it knows is there's something wrong. Your mind is fearful. Your mind is stressed and it can't perceive the outside world. It's what's going on inside of you, inside of your mind. And so it thinks that that tiger that's pictured there is chasing you. And to protect you from that tiger, because there is nothing more important than that tiger, because let's face it, it don't matter what disease you have in your body, it doesn't matter what you're facing, it's none of that's going to matter if you get eaten by that tiger. So what happens to your body is that you're literally starting to shut down your um, organs in your body, your immune system, your digestive system. And this is a time in our life when we all know that we're here to try to strengthen our body and our immune system so that we can fight off these foreign things like bacteria and viruses and toxins that are coming out into the environment. And so it's really important that we are able to calm our body. And so I want you to recognize that you have trillions of cells in your body and those cells are constantly communicating. Your brain sends messages to your blood and your blood then conforms to whether you're thinking something positive or you're thinking something negative. So when you're thinking something positive, it's like being out on the beach. You're happy. You get up in the morning and you say, a prayer to, you know, the universe, God, whoever you believe in, you say, you know, I am grateful today for being healthy. I am grateful today for having food and shelter. And you calm your body in doing that. And your DNA in your body just sort of comes out into this stretch that looks like you're laying on the beach. It's very long and calm. When you are get up with worried thoughts and panic thoughts, not only are you maybe spreading that to other people, those emotions through your energy, but you are also then your body is conforming in a different way. Instead of your body, let your DNA laying out like you're laying on a beach, it comes in like an accordion and now it's changing the cells in your body and it is shutting down different pieces of your of you know your functioning in your body to protect you from that tiger and so the story that i will tell you quickly about myself is that in 2015 i was the victim of a heinous crime and even though there was you know i didn't have anybody in my life that was attacking me at that time i gained such so much fear from 
you know, having my computer hacked and all these things that happened in my life that I couldn't get out of the fear and I couldn't get out of the grief of what was happening in my life and feeling that I had no power over it, that twice in that year, I ended up in the hospital. And my doctor had looked and found that through one of my test results that I had had a change in my thyroid, which was a marker that I was in the fight and flight syndrome. And I'm sure you've heard about that. And when that is usually when you're in stress, worry, anxiety, that is the, where your body goes. And my digestive tract had started to shut down, which is why I lost my appetite. My blood pressure went down. My blood sugars went down, which was the cause of my fainting. So that worry and fear that I had that wasn't real, it was imaginary because there was nothing in my current. That was the past. There was nothing in my current world that was that I should have been still fearing, but I had lost trust. I had anxiety. And because of that, I ended up with a shattered toe that I needed to have you know, stem cells. And I also, the second time around, they ended up with metal in my chest because the doctors didn't know what was going on. And they wanted to monitor like my chest, like my heart rate, like an EKG. So I'm, I'm giving you that story so that you want, can understand the power of your body shutting down when you're under stress. And I'm not saying that because I want you to feel blame, guilt, or any of those things, because that's what we're going to focus on next. So now that you understand you were born without fear, you know, just not, don't like loud noises and you don't want to be dropped as a baby, but everything else, you didn't care what people thought about you, whether you slobbered, you know, anything like that. And then over time in your life, um, you were really conditioned with all of your beliefs, your limiting beliefs, the fears that you've acquired. And those are the things a lot of times based on our background, when a situation comes into our world from the outside world, we either have fear around that external stuff, fear of disappointment, fear of, again, you know, being hurt, or that fear comes from within us, which is fake stuff right? It's the things that we imagine could happen to us or that we're dwelling on the past. So how do we cope with those things? Well, the very first thing is you have to be kind to yourself. Don't blame yourself because if you do any of that, those are more negative emotions that are just going to, you know, not hurt, help your health. It's actually going to harm your health. So you have to be kind to yourself and forgive yourself and to say, from now on, whenever I find myself talking negative to myself, or I find myself in these emotions that aren't serving me, what I'm going to do is one of these coping practices. And so on the screen, whoops. Okay, let's see. We can, there we go. Oops, I'm going in the wrong way. Here we go. So the first, the next is to pay attention to how you're feeling, but I am going to be giving you a handout that you can take with more detail to it. When you pay attention to how you're feeling, as soon as you start feeling something like, oh man, I'm tired. I don't have a lot of energy. I'm feeling sad, whatever it is. Immediately think about what was the thought that you had that caused that emotion? Because the circumstances that are around us isn't what causes the emotion. Think about it. There could be one person who sees somebody skiing and they're like, wow, look at that. And somebody else sees somebody skiing and going, ooh, right? It's not the circumstance. It's how we think about the circumstance that really creates our emotion. And so once you figure out what that thought was that triggered that feeling, you can then shift your mind and say, oh no, I ain't going down that rabbit hole. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to think maybe it's a happy thought, a memory of a trip that you took, you know, what you're going to do, you know, once um, you know, we're no longer in this situation where we're social distancing and we can go, you know, out into the world and, you know, hug our loved ones and, and really make connections again. And we also need to nourish our spirit with positive things. You know, there is a lot of science around the benefits of gratitude that when we wake up in the morning or even in the evening, we reflect on all the things in our life that are going right and the things that we have that we actually create this. You can't have fear and gratitude. You can't, you know, gratitude get, makes you happy and it gives you a sense of peace and optimism. Even if you had a bad day tomorrow, yesterday, 
And today you just put on a different hat and you say, nope, I'm not going there. I'm going to look at today. I only have today. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow is not here. Today is all I have. And I'm going to be happy today. I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to play a game. I'm going to read. I'm going to cook. I'm going to do something. But do whatever it is to make your day the best day because this is all we have. And then to use self-care practices to distract yourself or relax. So if you're able to go outside on a nice day, and even if it's walking around your yard, nature is healing. Take a warm bath. Um, do yoga. Meditate. You know, for those of you that don't know how to meditate, there are many things on um on the internet, if you're, you know, if you're into social media, you know, into the internet, you can go on there and get some really easy way to do it. But one of the best things you can do, and I'm going to teach you how to do that right now is to deep breathe because we can go without food for so many days and we can go without water for so many days, but we can't go without breathing for more than a few seconds or a few minutes. And so most of us breathe from the clavicle up, which is shallow, and we're never filling our lungs with energy. And to really support our immune system and to make us healthy, what we need to do is to take deep breaths so that you're breathing in through your mouth and to the point that your belly extends and you can even put your hands on your stomach to feel it and to do that three times and i'm just going to do it once for the sake of time but you would repeat it three times and then exhale fully so you can even do it to the count of three when you're inhaling and then push it out to like the count of four or five to really let go of all of your worries and all of the warm breath that comes out of you and just keep bringing in that healing energy of breath. So I'm going to do this once and putting my hands on my stomach and breathing into the count of three. And I exhaled at a count of six. If you do that several times, what that does is any stress or worry that you've had, I feel in one breath, I feel a change in my body. You literally, you impact your central nervous system. You have a sympathetic and a parasympathetic nervous system, and you are literally taking that out of this nervous energy, and you're calming your entire body just by breathing. It's one of the best things that you can do. And lastly, this isn't a good situation that we're all in right now. At least people don't feel that way. We have to make the best out of it. But no matter what your situation is, whether it's a health condition, whether it's the situation that we're in on, you know, social distancing and worrying, sometimes we have worries about our family. We actually have to accept the current issue because when we resist it, it's a negative emotion that's we're pushing against it and it's causing harm in our body. It doesn't mean giving up. It's the actual opposite. It's about letting go of what we don't have control over and doing what we can. So if it's a health issue, we, it's not going to do anything for us to commiserate and focus on what we don't want. What we need to say is how can we be co-creators in our life and do research or take the time to read or figure out what is it that we can do to strengthen our body, to improve our health, to strengthen our immune system. So we focus on that because if we don't accept it, we're not just dealing with our current situation. We could be creating another disease in our body. So this is where your inner power comes in, understanding how you have power over your emotions just by being mindful, just by paying attention to how you're thinking. And sometimes I laugh. If I say something negative to myself, I'll laugh out loud and say, you know, cancel that, forget that. I didn't mean that, you know. No, I'm not feeling bloated today. I'm feeling healthy. I feel great. And I start speaking life over myself. So I hope that this helped you in, 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 a, in some way understand how to get back your inner power. And I will be sending to the Penzl Family Success Center this handout, and I will try to put it in an image form so that they can actually post it on the site. And so I want to wish you all well. Stay, stay safe, stay healthy, and I wish you, you and your loved ones and everyone else in the world all the best. Thank you so much for your time.